Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video we're going to talk about the reprimitive add-on from Exact. Now let me start by saying that this add-on is amazing. It fixes a major flaw that I think Blender has, and it fixes it really well, like in a way that I didn't think it would necessarily work. So what exactly does this add-on do? Well, we're going to talk about that first, and then I'm going to a bit of a deep dive of the things this can do and the things this can't do at this point. And I have to say, with the way this works, it can do some very, very impressive things. So, the way this works is you now get on your right hand side, I've got lots of add-ons on here, we get the reprimitive function, which has fixed rotation and then reprimitive. We can also just use this with Control alt a or fixed rotation with Control alt r and we'll talk through both of those. Now, I'm going to go back to the top of my menu here so that we can look at some information for this object that we're going to bring in, which is going to be a cylinder, because it's easier to talk about with us being able to see the item info. So I'll be using the shortcuts, and you can see that in the bottom right hand corner. So we've just added in a cylinder, as you normally would do. And importantly, we can change information about this as we bring it in. We can change the radius, the depth, anything like that. And if I decide I want to pan around or click off of it, this option then goes away, but we can bring it back if we hit F9 on our keyboard, and we get this all back and we can still change things about it. Now this F9 brings back the last function or operator that's been done by Blender and that means that if I do anything like move it or rotate it, as soon as I do that, now if I press F9, we get the rotate back. We've lost the ability to change the information about this shape. What Reprimitive does is allow us to pretty much always change this information as long as it's still this basic object. I'll add to that later in the deep dive section because actually it is a bit more impressive than that. So if I press Control Alt and A, we get this tweak cylinder box and now I can go back to changing it. I can change the radius, change the depth. I mean, this is all very, very impressive that we can come in and change all this information. Now, where this gets very impressive and my assumption of a limitation on this gets disproved if I just shift an A mesh and bring in a new cylinder so that we can see what we're talking about is if I G and then let's say scale this and then rotate it, we normally in the item menu have all of this information stored and saved. We've got all the rotation here and all of the scale. And it makes sense in a way that we can use this reprimitive and it will keep everything because all of the information is there. But if I control an A and apply the rotation and scale, all of this information has been lost. Yet, with Control Alt and A, I still get the reprimitive menu and it will keep everything. It stays the same size and it keeps the rotation even though that was applied. And you notice it then brings it back in some form, though notice that the scale has stayed as one. So this is actually way more impressive than you might originally think. And it shows just how much the designer, Exact, has considered what people want to be able to do. So this is absolutely absolutely mind-blowing. Now the final thing that this can do, and I think this works off the fact that it's doing these calculations, is if I shift A, mesh, and bring in let's say another cylinder, let's just G and then R that, normally I can get rid of this rotation information. I can just press Alt and R and it clears the rotation because the rotation was stored here. If I just rotate it again, Blender knows how much I've rotated it, Alt and R means it knows to just put it back to where it was. However, if I R and then Control and A and apply the rotation, I can't press Alt and R because there's no rotation information to work off. So where this gets impressive is that if I, let's bring in another cylinder and then G and then R that, and then we come to the item so we can see this in Control and A and apply the rotation. If I press Control Alt and R, once again, it will fix it. Even though it doesn't have this information stored, we'll do that again, rotate it, Control and A, apply the rotation, even though Blender doesn't have this information anymore, with Reprimitive, Control Alt and R, it will fix it and bring it back to its original orientation. Now I would love if there was another button that I could press in combination with this, where instead of bringing it back to its original location, I could press it and it just works out the rotation again. That'd be really cool. But either way, this is a very, very impressive tool. Now to get this, I got this from GitHub. If you scroll down here, it gives some information about this and you can notice it has been updated two months ago. This is an ongoing project 
and it is being worked on continuously. So I am going to mention some limitations on this and some areas where it doesn't quite work now because I think it's important to talk through everything. But this is being updated and any changes that are made, I'll either do an update video and put a link to that in the description or I will just in the description explain what's changed. Now, to get this, you just go to code and then download zip. And I would add this is free, which is even more impressive, but it is always very nice if you can tip the designer because obviously a lot of work has gone into this and keeps being put into this. Now you can also get this on Gumroad and I found that with the current version of Blender I'm working on, which is 4.2, the Gumroad version seemed to have some bugs with it, whereas this version and GitHub worked better. So I'd suggest you stick with the GitHub version for now. Again, if that changes, I'll mention that in the description. So let's take a bit of a deep dive into this and what this can do and what it can't. Now, as I said, if anything of this changes, I'll either do a new video and put it in the description or make a comment of this in the description. But at the moment, there's some real interesting things about this functionality that you should know about. The first, let's just G and then R. And what I'm gonna do is scale this on the Y axis, something like that. Now, the first limitation of this is because of the way this functions, seemingly to ignore the scale and the rotation, which it kind of has to do if we want it to work in the way it does. If I press Control, Alt and A and start changing anything, it does seem to work out or re-change this to be the scale on the widest axis and then puts everything equal to that. So you can't just have it scaled in one direction, kind of, I'll come to that, because it's trying to ignore the scale as part of this. So if you want to scale this just on the y-axis or the x-axis, that's not going to work. However, interestingly, if I bring in a cylinder and then G and then R and then S and then ZZ and scale it in this direction and then Control, Alt and A and reprimitive it, it will work. Let's talk about why. And again, I don't know the designer of this. This is me suggesting. But... The way this seems to recalculate everything is it seems to look at all of the options that are in the original information. So if I control an A mesh and bring in a cylinder again, we can see we have vertices, we have a radius, and the depth is the distance in the z-axis. So as part of this calculation for this one over here, it automatically needs to look at, well, what is the z-axis to work out the depth? And it seems to calculate that from the object. It needs to work out the radius it does that from the widest part of the radius, which is why we can't do X and Y, and then it will do the vertices. So again, if I just S and ZZ, this will work. Control Alt A, this will work fine, and I can change everything. But if I S and then do it in the X direction and Control Alt and A, this will then have to reset the radius because it can't work that out. Now this also has some functions within the object as well. If I try to do a similar thing inside this object by let's say selecting this face and GG and moving that down, even though I've quite heavily affected this object, if I press Control Alt and A, once again, this will work fine because it's recalculating the depth and effectively the depth is the thing that I've changed by moving this face. So this then limits what we could do. For example, if I took this face and just scale it to create a cone type shape, and then control alt and a and start fiddling around with this we can't do that it will not like it and if we notice actually it hasn't worked off the widest radius it must select one of them either the top or the bottom and actually it doesn't seem to always be the widest of that it seems to go off the y-axis more than the x if we look at what's just happened and what happened previously but if i bring in something like a cone now a cone is a cylinder but we can change all of these radiuses so the radius at the top and the radius at the bottom. So I can actually make this a cylinder. That is now a cylinder. And what's interesting is that if I G and then R, just because I like doing that because it demonstrates everything, if I come into this face here and G, G, and bring that down, but also S to scale it in, well, when I press Control, Alt, and A, because this thinks it's a cone, and it then recalculates the top radius, the bottom radius, the vertices, and the depth, it has no problem with that because it has recalculated each of these options. So in many ways, if you want to be able to fill around with this later, using a cone as opposed to a cylinder gives you more options 
because I can come in without using the add-on and then let's say G and then ZZ that down and then S and then scale that up and I can still control Alt and A and just change the vertices because it calculated everything as part of this shape. So I think this is very, very exciting. Now there is one other thing that this can do, which is a very neat party trick, which is again, we'll use a cylinder. Let's make it so the depth is less ridiculous and then G and then R this around. And we are going to come into our modifier panel and I'm gonna add a bevel. So let's add a bevel in, let's make it a bit larger and I'll just leave it as this chamfer. Now, because this modifier is not applied, if I control Alt and A to tweak this using the re-primitive add-on, I can change all of my details here and it will still keep this bevel. Now there is an odd limit to this and I want to highlight this because it does seem to be something that's been mentioned in the GitHub and it does seem to be something that's being worked on. So hopefully this will get solved. If I do the same thing and bring in a cylinder and then G and then R and then use hard ops to add a bevel in. So we'll just do that there. Let's scroll down and then shade flat. This, even though it is a bevel modifier, everything about this is the same as far as I can tell. If I control Alt and A and start changing things, it makes a new object, but that object is underneath or on top of, depending on the way you look at it, the one that was originally there. It doesn't seem to like this for hard ops for some reason. Now we could just copy the modifiers over, Control and C and then copy modifiers. So this isn't the worst thing in the world, but it is something that seems to be looked into being fixed. Now, interestingly, this doesn't seem to have the same problem. Let's just mesh and bring in a cylinder. Again, we'll do the same thing. If I use ND to do this, so Shift and two, and then we're gonna bevel this and bevel. For some reason with ND, this doesn't have the same, oh, let's shade this flat so it's the same. It doesn't seem to have the same problem. And with ND, this will work. Not sure what they've got against hard ops. I don't think they actually have something against hard ops. I'm just joking. But this is something that needs to be fixed or hopefully will be fixed. In a similar vein, if I just shift and bring in a cylinder again, and then G and then R will go this way. And then let's bring in a cube. If I S and shift and Z and then go here, I'm just gonna make a copy of this. So shift and D and then X. If I Boolean this out, I can still shift Alt and A and then change this object and it will keep all of the information that we've got because it keeps the modifier. Now, if I just, let's shift and D and bring in another version of that. If I use box cutter again though, so Alt and W and then we'll just do something like that. Again, this has a problem. Shift Alt A vertices and you'll see again, it makes a duplicate on top of the one that was originally there and it doesn't have the modifier on it. Again, we can come here, control select that one and then control and C and then copy modifiers. So there's ways around this, but again, it's not seeming to like box cutter and some of its functionalities. But once again, if I shift and two and then use the Boolean and then difference with ND, this doesn't seem to have this same issue. So just be aware of this if you're using box cutter to do a lot of your cuts, there is this limitation here. The other thing that it won't like, which is kind of understandable, is that if I bring in a cylinder and then again, we'll do all the standard things and I do a bevel modifier, so add modifier bevel and I don't want to do this on angle, I want to do this on weight. I'm gonna come into edges, select that and then up my mean bevel weight so that we've got this only working on the edges that we've picked, not all of them. If I control Alt and A and then change this, it loses that information because I think it almost thinks of this as a new object in many ways. Now we've still got the modifier there, so I can still just go into the edges, select that edge and then up the weight again. So the modifier is still there, but it is a slight limitation. So it can't seem to keep that edge information between versions of the object. Finally, if you do anything to modify your shape beyond what was in the original shape, which I showed earlier. So again, I'll bring in a cylinder. If we just go into edge mode and add an edge loop there and then try and do the same thing. Let's actually just G and R it. Control Alt and A. It sort of works, but now it doesn't seem to be able to deal with the rotation very well. 
and while it then works with everything in every other way, we're going to have to re-rotate it. So it sort of works if you've added geometry, but not quite properly. So we do need to keep these as base shapes if we want to use them. Either way though, I think this is an amazing add-on and it's free. Don't forget that guys, this is costing nothing. Though again, please do tip the designer. This is an add-on with amazing functionality to it and it really does solve some issues that Blender normally has. So hopefully you're going to find that add-on as exciting as I do. Head over to GitHub and get it because this is brilliant. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like button. It helps other people find the video and find out about this awesome add-on. If you're not subscribed to the channel, subscribe. And if you really want to support the channel further, there is a Patreon page where for a few dollars a month you get these videos ad-free, ahead of time, and other great perks as well. Have a great day, guys.